Whether it's a product for home or business, farm or factory, you can be sure if it's Westinghouse. Studio One. Thank you for your patience. These are the last three paintings I've done. I want you to tell me frankly if you think it's worthwhile for me to continue. Why? Well, I'm very poor, monsieur. If I have no talent, I'd rather do something else. Uh, don't you know if you have talent? All my friends are quite sure they have talent, but I'm aware that some of them are mistaken. Show me the others, Monsieur Carey. of the paintings. I have some sketches here. That's all there is. You have very little private means? Not enough to live on. <laughs> what artist has private means? There is nothing so degrading as a constant anxiety about money. I have nothing but contempt for people who despise money. <laughs> I pity with all my heart. The artist who is entirely dependent on his art, whether it is good or bad. I'm afraid that sounds as though you didn't think I had much chance. Well, Monsieur Carey, you, you have a certain manual dexterity. You, you could find hundreds who, who painted worse than you, hundreds who painted as well. I see industry and intelligence in what you have shown me. I see no talent. You will never be anything but mediocre. You asked for the truth. It sounds very hard, I know. But I wish now that someone had given me that advice when I was your age, and I had taken it. It is cruel to discover one's mediocrity only when it is too late. And uh, now you must excuse me. I find such moments acutely embarrassing. <laughs> That's what you get for it, my boy. Sticking your finger in the weasel's cage. Well, I asked for it. I got it. Here, have a whiskey. You're digging this too hard. No love of art is worth it. Living's the link. Two years. Two years wasted pinching and scraping to pay for lessons. I was going to be the greatest artist in the world, I thought. Meant more to me than anything else. It's two years. Ah, wait until you've wasted 40. Now at 60, I've learned to accept the fact that I'm a mediocre poet with equanimity and without a blush. But, Philip, my boy, I've learned something else. Learned the value of searching out the manifold experience life offers, wringing from each moment what emotion it presents. <laughs> As for posterity, Merely the dregs in the upturned glass. <laughs> You're young, full of idealistic pap. And I'm leaving Paris for good. Where will you go? I have a little money left. I shall take the boat train for London tonight and start studying medicine as soon as I can. Huh? Doctor, eh? Think that'll save you the trouble of discovering the meaning of life? What meaning? Is there any? See this? It's a piece cut from an old Persian rug. I've carried it for years, because I've admired the beauty and complexity of its pattern. Something of the beauty and complexity of life. Here, my boy, I give it to you. 
Study it well. Oh, no, Crunch, I couldn't possibly take this. Nonsense. Take it as a farewell gift from a drunken old poet. <laughs> See how beautiful and intricate the design is. <laughs> it's part of a praying rug from the East. Old enough to have borrowed something from eternity. Examine it well. And if you can discover the relationship between yourself and eternity, you all have found the meaning of life. I keep it for sentiment. It was given me by an old friend in Paris. You know, Philip, I envy you, having lived in Paris. I've never even been there, let alone lived a, a romantic life among artists and poets. What a chump you were to give it up and study medicine. I had to. I was a failure. I'm sorry. Sometimes it all seems like a dream that happened years ago. Now my life is completely taken up with the curriculum of the conjoint board of the College of Surgeons. <laughs> Here. Know what you wanted to borrow? Oh, yes, thanks. <clears throat> I say, Philip, I, I didn't really come to borrow this. I wanted a chance to tell you how rotten we all felt about, about what happened in class this morning. You mean about asking me to show my foot to the anatomy class? Yes, sir. The boys really felt it was a pretty careless thing to do. Did they? Apparently you didn't hear what one of them said when I took my boot and sock off. Keeps his feet nice and clean, doesn't he? Oh, but I'm sure they didn't mean anything by I know by what that. they meant. It's just that I'm sick of being made a guinea pig in front of 50 fellow students while a lecturer points out that I have a perfect Talipis Aquinas. Pretty rotten, I must say. Since you've asked me, I'll tell you. Yes, I was horribly ashamed and humiliated. Here, let me show you something. See this box? I'm saving up. Each week I skip a meal or go without tobacco for a day. Each pound I make up goes into this box toward the day when I shall have 150. 150 quid? Yes, it's rather an expensive operation. But how long will it take to save that much? I don't know. Perhaps years. I only know that someday I'm going to put an end to being a physical curiosity. I haven't had a bite to eat all day, would you? Like to come out with me and get something? Oh, all right. I have to meet my cousin in about half an hour, though. I haven't very much time. Oh, good, I haven't very much money. Well, let's, um, let's go to Lyons. There's a waitress there I've been trying to make a date with. You always had pretty low taste. Oh, this one's pretty and unusual. Now, what's the name? Uh, Mildred. What a pretentious name for a waitress. Mildred. Here we are. Thank you, schön, Liebchen. <laughs> Keep me waiting a long time. Sorry, I'm sure. Want a tea now? No. I'm in no hurry when I have you to wait on me. Now then, saucy. <laughs> you want for me to take you to the music hall one night? And huh? saucy. I'm not allowed to talk to customers. Tomorrow night? Oh, never mind. Ah, uh, medical students. They come to make take date with you too, huh? Fat chance. Hmm. Students are students. I've got more to do with my time. <laughs> That's the one I told you about over there. Don't you think she has a wonderful face? Wonderfully vulgar. Cold as alabaster. Well, that's one of her favorites over there. I wish he'd, I wish he'd eat his sauerkraut somewhere else. <laughs> you know, she knows perfectly well we're waiting. Hey, don't annoy her, otherwise we shall never get served, and I haven't much time. We're paying customers, miss. I say, miss. We've been waiting some time. Give your orders, please. Two teas and bundle, please. Well, and how's the prettiest waitress in lines tonight? Interesting pallor, isn't it? Like the El Greco's in the Louvre. Probably only Blood's pills, though. I'm here to take orders. I've got nothing to say to the customers, and I don't want them to say anything to me. Except for some customers, it seems. Some people might do well to mind their own business. Go on. I, I wish you'd say something really cheeky. Uh, why, pray? Because then I could report you to the management. Oh, I never get that cheeky. Oh, I can't say I admire your taste. She's vulgar, unhealthy, and insolent. Well, you've got her back up. Well, the state of her vertebrae is a matter of supreme indifference to me. <laughs> Thank you, sir, Lieutenant. You're welcome. 
come on through? Oh, Lord, look at that. Now we shall never get served. I'm late already. Don't you want your tea? No, I've lost interest even in the tea. See you in class tomorrow. Right. Thank you. Sure. Ah. Oh. Here we are. And at what time shall I pick you up tomorrow? I'm tomorrow? off at seven. Mm-hmm. And we go to see the meadow widow. And first we have dinner somewhere with champagne. Oh, I don't mind. Tomorrow then. Naturally, he couldn't wait all night. Well, uh, that be all. Huh? Yes, I think so, thank you. Is that supposed to be me? Yes, do you mind? Can I see? There you are. Oh, I say, it's not bad. Can I keep it? Of course. Am I forgiven now? I don't know what you refer to. I say, don't do it for any of the others, will you? Well, why not? Well, it's not every day I get myself sketched by a real artist. Oh, I see. Well, I'm afraid I'm not a real artist any longer. I gave it up ages ago. Oh, why ever? I should think it would be much nicer than cutting people up. Well. That's a matter of opinion. I say, would you care to have dinner with me one night? What either for? Well, I'd like you to. We, we could have dinner somewhere and go to a show. Have you seen The Bell of New York? Five times. Oh, then I suppose you wouldn't care to see it again. I don't mind. You mean you'll go? I might. When's your night off? Thursdays. That's tomorrow. Shall I pick you up here? Oh, no, I can't tomorrow night. I have to look after my aunt. Oh. Of course, I might find someone to take over for me. I'll pick you up here at seven, then. No, I'd rather you didn't. Makes the girls talk. Where, then? Oh, anywhere. Makes no difference to me. Victoria Station waiting room, then? You're mine. All right. It's raining again. You'll need your coat. Oh, thank you. There we are. I'll pick you up here at Victoria Station, rather, at 7. Well, Dunsford, how'd you get in? Your landlady. I came to give you the results of the anatomy test last week. Oh? I haven't been by the college today. How'd they come out? You didn't. You mean I flunked? Uh-huh. Oh. Well, I shall take it again in six months. Expect to pass then? Why not? Because you've been cutting lectures, and when you have been there, you haven't been paying attention. I feel partly responsible. What on earth have you got to do with it? I introduced you to her. Oh, Phil, I don't know how you can. What are you talking about? That waitress. I know you've been seeing her all the time, but I'd no idea you've been spending all this money on... Oh, so you've been looking at my records. It was open on the table. Phil, you... You haven't been spending the money you've been saving for your operation, have you? Not so far. But even if I had, I don't see what business it is of yours. Would you mind getting out? Look, Phil, you're throwing away everything on something. I don't think Would you... Would you mind going? She's not worth it. Take a look at yourself, you fool. You know she'll never want you, no matter how much of your precious savings you waste on her. What did she say last night? No use you walking with me. I'm in a hurry. 
She'll never want you. A man with a limp? What do I see in her? Why am I haunted with a pale, colorless face? You'd best forget her. Forget her. I hate her. I despise her. I love her with all my heart. I can't touch that. Is it just what I wanted? Ever so nice. You like it like too. Mildred, do you really like it? Oh, yes. You are good to me, Philip. I'd rather like to kiss you. I don't mind. Get full, Cindy. You knocked my hat off. Mildred, don't you care for me at all? I don't know. You must love me a little. I love you so much. Oh, well, I don't suppose I should be here if I didn't. Once is enough. Shall I see you tomorrow night? Well, as to that, I'm afraid I can't. Why not? Well, I have an appointment. It's with that, that foreigner, isn't it? That Emil Miller. Oh, what if it is? If you had any sense of gratitude or decency, you wouldn't do a thing like that. I don't know what you mean. Anyway, it isn't very lively going around with you all the time. It's always, you love me, you love me, till I'm always sick of it. Oh, it isn't that I don't like you, Philip. I like you all right. At all. Well, what I say is, people mistake me as they find me. They don't like it, they can love me. No, don't go in yet. I must, it's late. Besides, it isn't very ladylike talking to a gentleman on the steps. My aunt wouldn't like it. Mildred, please wait just a minute. I have something very important to say to you. You remember you said once it was the dream of your life to go to Paris? Supposing I said we might go there for a few days. Ow. Would cost a bit. Well, I know, but I have a bit of money saved up for it. Well, perhaps I could manage it. Mildred, I could take you to the cafes where I used to go well, when I was Well, I painting. never. I can't see myself going off to Paris with a man I wasn't married to. Paris? Yes, you can't afford to keep two or so, you're always saying. I think it's silly even talking about Mildred, it. Mildred, would you consider I'm it? not going to Paris with you, Philip, and that's that. Mildred, Good night. Don't leave me like this, Mildred. Did he buy you that coat? He did. He says I have a way with clothes. You haven't half struck it lucky. Wish I could. Better get a move on, Nellie. You'll be stuck in this hell forever. Nellie, do me a favor. I don't want to run into him. He wouldn't like it. Tell him I'm gone for the night. I'm sorry, but we're just closing. Oh, I don't want anything. I'm waiting for Mildred. Oh, I'm sorry, but Mildred's gone. She left early tonight. She wasn't feeling too well. Oh. Will she be in tomorrow, do you know? Tomorrow's Sunday. We're closed. Oh, yes, of course. Forgive me. Thank you. It's all right. He's gone. That was a near one. I don't want to talk to him. It's not much fun with him, I can tell you. I better wait till the house clear. Philip, what are you doing here? I thought I'd find you here. What do you mean? Oh, look, Phil, she, she's not worth waiting for. Please mind your own business. But look what you're doing to yourself. Suppose they find out at the hospital how you lost your microscope. Don't you realize you have an exam for Materia Medica next Thursday? Don't you care? Not particularly. We're going to be married. I've made up my mind. Married? Yes, I've come to ask her to marry me. So please leave me alone. Oh, Phil, you can't. Don't you realize that this is just the sort of thing that could blast your whole career? Okay, let's go and have some tea. No, I wasn't. You got a cheek, I must say. If you were a gentleman... Mildred, please don't be angry with me. 
I've stayed away from you for three weeks. Tried to put you out of my mind, but it was useless. I don't know which is worse, to be with you or to be away from you. Let's take a cab and go somewhere for dinner. I'm afraid I can't. But I have something very important to ask you. Oh? Can't we go somewhere quiet and talk? What do you want to say to me? I want you to marry me, Mildred. Why? Because I can't live without you. I, I know you don't love me as much as I love you, but I spend my life making you happy. Oh, I'm very grateful to you, Philip. Very flattered by your proposal. Oh, Mildred, stop quoting those trashy novelettes. I'm asking you to marry me, please. Fact is, you're a bit late. What do you mean? Well, you see, I'm already engaged. I have been all week. May I ask to whom? Mr. Emil Miller. He came into lunch one day and asked me. He's earning very good money now, and he has prospects. Naturally, you took the highest bidder. Thank pardon. When is it to be? Tuesday. So soon? Yes. I already gave my notice at the cafe. Mildred, how could you? I loved you so much. I gave you everything I had. I pawned my microscope to buy you a birthday present. Went without things, hoping you'd say well, yes. Well, I never. I would expect a gentleman to refer to the presents he gives a lady, but in any case, you better have this back. Emil wouldn't approve of my having anything you gave me. Oh, there he is now. I'll have to say to you to do goodbye, Philip. Oh, have it your own way. There you are, you're late, naughty. Who's that? Oh, oh that. I was just saying goodbye to one of the customers. Liebchen? Now that you've seen part one of Human Bondage, let's turn to our Westinghouse program. Easy on the eyes. Hey, I guess we all agree to that. Well, the close-up often is easier on the eyes when you're watching television. And you can have a giant close-up whenever you want it with the amazing new Westinghouse electronic magnifier. Now, only the Westinghouse sets have this wonderful electronic magnifier that give you a giant, clear, crisp close-up whenever you turn this knob. For example, here's an entertainer at her piano as you'd see her on a standard size picture. Now, just switch on the electronic magnifier and there. You're so close, you can follow every facial expression, every gesture. So wonderfully close. So easy on your eyes. Now, this Westinghouse set has a 12 and a half inch picture tube. But with the electronic magnifier, you get an image almost as big as you'd get with a 20 inch tube. Amazing, isn't it? Suppose, for instance, that you want to get a closer look at, well, say my necklace. Just turn your Westinghouse magnifier knob and there. You can almost tell whether it's real or not. Yes, with this set, you get real big picture television, and you get it at small picture price. Yes, and you can save on installation costs, too, when you buy a Westinghouse set. Look, 10, 20, 30, 40, up to $45. You save all this because in many localities with the new Westinghouse television sets, you don't need any roof installation. Why, you don't even need an indoor antenna. And the reason is, Westinghouse builds the antenna right inside the cabinet. A wonderful Westinghouse improvement. And your stations come in so clear. Yes, and these new Westinghouse sets bring you even more. Westinghouse Synchro Tuning. Tune in for the best picture and you get the best sound automatically. Come on in my store and see the new line of Westinghouse television sets. It's your biggest dollar's worth in television. And now let's return to Studio One and of human bondage. And so, ladies and gentlemen, I ask you to raise your glasses and drink the health of the eminent MD in the making, Philip Carey. 
Oh, no, Philip, you can't drink to this one. Oh, do shut up, Alan. Let us have our port in comfort. It's the very cheapest port, I'm afraid. I get it around the corner from a sleazy old harpy for 18 pence a bottle. Well, I like it. It is Sally Athelney. Easiest guest I ever had to entertain. And the nicest. That's most gallant, Philip. Now, Alan, what I can't understand is why it took you so long to let me know you had a radiant cousin from Kent. Oh, I say, that's a bit cheesy, old boy. Radiant cousin from Kent. Sounds like a third-rate musical comedy or something. <laughs> My hat, look at the time. It's after nine o'clock. I had no idea it was so late. Having too good a time, I suppose. Wait, I've got something to show you. Oh, what's that? A new one? No, the old one back again. Had you lost it? Yes, sort of a way I had. Just paid back the last installment on it today. Took me three months. Good man. Well, thanks for an elegant dinner. I'd better get my coat. You don't have to go just yet, do you? Of course she doesn't. Excuse me for eating and running, but it's one of those grim evenings in the Pater's study when I have to cough up a reasonable excuse as to why I'm overdrawn at the bank. The old boy gets purple in the face if I'm a minute late. <laughs> you better go before he explodes. No, oh, he won't blot for years yet. He's an institution like the Bank of England. Goodbye, sir. Goodbye, Alan. Sure, Philip. I'm awfully glad you didn't, though. I was afraid perhaps I'd overstayed my welcome. No. I've come to look forward to your visits here these past few months. Begun to count on them. You do something very good for me. You do a wonderful sort of inner quiet. You can stay forever as far as I'm concerned. That's a very nice speech, Philip. Well, it wasn't meant to be. Should we have a fire? No, I really mustn't stay much longer. Do you realize I've been here over four hours already? It's a very quick four hours. It's usually not easy for me to get to know people, you know. It should be. Well, it isn't. May I... May I say something I've wanted to say for a long time, Philip? Go ahead. It's very silly of you to be so sensitive about your foot. People don't notice it nearly as much as you do. They're you're angry with me. No, I'm not. You know, I only talk of it because I'm very fond of you. Are you? Why? Alan told me you're saving up for an operation. Yes. I'm only 50 pounds short of the whole amount by now. Fine. May I pay a penalty for speaking out of town? No, I couldn't possibly let you do so. Please. I want to have a part in it. Philip, Philip, news! News! Wonderful news! You... Oh? I'm sorry, I didn't know that you had company. Miss uh, Sally Athelney, Mr. Harry Griffiths. Well, I am delighted. How do you do? The, the results out yet? Huh? Oh, you made the top grade. With A's falling around you thicker than snowflakes. Congratulations, <laughs> old boy. That's I wonderful. say, the young Davis. Pe well, what about you, Harry? <laughs> I flunked. Well, I expected to. Guess I'll have to try again. Too fond of fun, Miss Athelney. Well, I just dropped in to give you the news. Awfully nice meeting you. See you later, Philip. Did you feel badly when you failed the first time, Philip? No, I deserved to. Was it because of her? Yes. You don't mind my talking about her? No, I'd almost forgotten about her. I don't believe that somehow. No, honestly. It was the most humiliating experience of my life. I really loathed myself for loving her. I hated her thin, flat little body and her mean little mouth. Hated her vulgar hair and a loathsome pretense of respectability. Yet I couldn't get her out of my mind. She gave me nothing. I loved her with all my heart. You're laughing at me. You're too intense. Now I'm going to help clear up and you're not to do a single thing. Have your pipe. I like the smell. Shall I get... No, 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 I'll take it. Delighted to see you, Mr. Kerry. See me? She's been here three times when you was out. Tell her I... It's important. All right, Mrs. Cameron, thank you. Huh. I'd hoped I'd never see you again. What? <laughs> All right, come in. Don't make a scene in the hall. I, I can only give you a few moments. <laughs> now, what's happened? He left me. Amy. I'm not surprised. Oh, don't be nasty to me, Philip. 
I wish now I'd married you when you asked me. You were always so good. This is a friend of mine. Please don't get up. Philip, I think I must go. Will you forgive me Sally, if I run? please don't go. I really must. Give me a ring tomorrow. I wish you wouldn't go, Sarah. I didn't realize it was so late. Please. Take good care of yourself and ring me up, will you? Let me come down with you. No, no, I can get a cab at the corner. Goodbye. Who was that? Just a friend. Are you going on there now? No, I'm not going on there now. Now then, what's happened? If he left me, I wrote him a letter saying if, if he didn't come home, I, I'd go and find him. And I got this letter back. Didn't you know? He lied to me. We were married, Philip, at the registry office. I signed the papers and everything. I, I had a ring. You will rid of him. Oh, Philip. Philip, you don't understand. I'm going to have a baby. Then he must be made to provide for it. He won't. Why not? I went to his place to find him. All the time he was married, lying to me, never telling me. Now he's gone back to Germany with her and left no address. What a swine. He left me without a penny. He hasn't even paid the rent. Milton, He used to beat me too. I can't go back to my aunt now. I'd be thrown out in the street. I can't get my own job back the way I am. I've got nowhere. Not a friend to turn to in the world but you, Philip. Don't cry. No. I wish I was dead. No, I... you don't. Oh, Philip, if you could only forgive me for the things I said to you. I, I didn't mean them. Oh, Philip, if, if you still want me, I, I'd do anything for you now. Oh, I know you're a gentleman in every sense of the word. Oh, Philip, I've got nowhere to go. You're not angry with me, are you? No. I'm not angry with you. Anyone home? Philip home? Not yet. Trying to get the baby to sit for hours. Yes, I thought I heard the baby crying, so I opened the door. Worried about baby? <laughs> well, I knew that if I heard a baby crying, that her mother must be here. I don't approve of having gentlemen visitors. It's turned quite cold today, hasn't it? Has it? Rather warm in here. Is it? Now then. You're very pretty, you know. Oh, I thank you to keep your hands to yourself, Mary Griffiths. Don't pretend you weren't giving me the eye all through dinner last night when Philip wasn't looking. Oh, I never did. <laughs> and the night before that. You are awful. <laughs> So you're going off to Paris with Philip on Saturday, eh? Yes. What's that for, your conscience? I don't know what you mean. Well, when a chap's paid your bills and your baby's upkeep and never expected a thing in don't return... Don't talk well... like that. It's comp. Don't you wish you were going to Paris with me? We're going to see the sights. It isn't what you think. Philip is a gentleman in every sense of the word. Yes, but you could have more fun with me. Mind my ear, clumsy. Why won't you come to Paris with me? You really mean it. I'll show you how much I mean it. Look out, he's coming. Hello? Oh, hello, Philip. Hello, Phil. Harry <laughs> just popped in to see if we wanted anything. Very nice of him. I'm getting to know now. Well, I, uh, I must be running along. Why don't you stay for dinner? There's plenty. Hey, Philip? Yes, let him stay if he wants. Well, thanks very much, Philip. I'll just run up and brush up a bit. See you in church. Why did you ask him to stay to dinner? Oh, there's plenty. He's bright company. Meaning that I am dull and a bore? <laughs> well, you're not funny. If it pleases you, I can wear a paper cap and blow through my spaghetti as he does. Oh, all right, sulky. You don't want to take him too seriously, you know. I've seen them come and go here for six months. What do you mean? I know you too well by now not to recognize the signs. You're fascinated by Harry. What if I am? 
Why, he doesn't care for you. Doesn't he just? That's where you're wrong. Pity you didn't come in a minute earlier. You would have seen just how much he cares for me. Why don't you ask him if he can take care of you and the baby, then? If you were a gentleman, you wouldn't throw that in my face. If I were a gentleman, I wouldn't allow myself to be humiliated by a rotten little... Don't you talk! Call yourself a gentleman. You and your heirs. How much do you bet me Harry Griffiths wouldn't do the same for me? He wouldn't. Why not? He couldn't. Because he's not in love with you, and I am. How do you know? Because I asked him last night. <laughs> Stop that. Stop laughing at me. Did he tell you? You know what? He asked me to go to Paris with him. If you don't believe me, go on and ask him. Go on. Did he tell you how he was going to pay for it? Did he tell you he owes me 20 pounds? Why don't you ask him if he can pay these bills of yours? And take care of the baby while you're away. Because if he can, you're welcome to go with him any time instead of me. You think he wouldn't? You'll find out you're not the only gentleman who's willing to spend money on me. I'll ask him. See if I want it. Oh, God. Help me to stop loving. <laughs> Phil, really, I am. Are you in love with him? I can't help myself. I never felt this way, not even with Emil. Would it help if I offered to make you and Harry a present of the tickets to Paris? Would you? Oh, Phil, do you really mean it? You'll need some money, too. Here's the 50 pounds I'd saved for us. I don't understand. Don't you? It's fairly obvious. I'm buying my way out of bondage. Oh, Phil, you are good to me. Where are you going? Out. When I come back, I don't expect to find you or the baby here. I hope that's clear. Goodbye, Mildred. about four miles. Oh, darling, I'm sorry. I forgot about... I mean that you might get tired. Tired? This is what I need. You don't know how I've missed being here and seeing you these last few months since... Since she left? Why didn't you come before? Oh, I was afraid. You needn't be. I'm not sure I should have come here now, Sally. It's not fair to you. Why not? I love you, Philip. You know that. Well, that's why. You're kind, wise, understanding. You're what I need. Yet... I understand, Philip. You've always been in a kind of humiliating servitude to Mildred, and now you're afraid you might be in another kind of servitude to me. I don't want to be a cheat to you, Sally. I believe I love you, but believing isn't enough. But I must be sure. You're going back to London tomorrow. You'll have plenty of time to think about us. I don't mind waiting. You're a very wonderful sort of person, you know that? Nonsense. I'm just scheming to get you. <laughs> no, we ought to go back. Mother will have lunch almost ready. How's the sketch going, may I see? Oh, it's nothing. I... I wasn't even aware of what I was doing. somewhere and talk. No water talk. Leave me alone. Mildred, how can you? I have to eat, don't I? But the baby's sick. She's got to have attention. And I've only got a pound on me. There you are. Oh, Phil, you are a gent. 
I'll pay you back just as soon as I can. Harry. It didn't last long. I'm so tired. I, I wish I was dead. You were sick yourself. I'm all right. I tell you, you better not be seen talking to me. Goodbye. Off it, chum. Have you had anything to eat today? Not all day. Come along. We'll get a cab and go pick up the baby. Where are you going? To my place. If you're sick, somebody's got to take care of you. Take me into your room after what I've done to you. Mrs. Cameron call you just now? Mrs. Carey? Oh, I had to tell her something, didn't I? What? She knows perfectly well the only reason you're here is that your baby's sick and you're destitute. Well, have it your own way. Sure, it doesn't matter to me one way or the other. Bad news. Old Cruncher died last night. He was a great poet in his way. He gave me that piece of carpet on the wall. Oh, that dirty old bit of mat. It ought to be on the floor where it belongs. You wouldn't understand. There's a lot I don't understand. But that's because I'm common. Now, what's the matter with you tonight? Oh, nothing. Just pay to cook and clean around you. Now, Mildred, you know that's not true. Isn't it? You never take me out anymore. Not that I blame you. And nothing to wear but this shabby old thing. But as I say, it's dull here all day with you at the hospital. Mildred, I've explained to you that I'm very hard up just now. Oh? What about that tin full of money? Oh, don't worry, I haven't touched your precious savings. That money is put by for a very special purpose. Oh, I can guess. Sally Athelney was always sending you postcards from Kent. It has nothing to do with her. Here. There's five pounds. Go buy yourself something tomorrow. Oh, thank you, Phil. I'm sorry if I was nasty about it. I, I didn't mean to be. Now, eat your supper. I, I do love you, Phil. Don't talk rot. It's true. Get up. You're making a fool of yourself. I wanted to tell you for weeks. I love you. I know now that I always did. I... I'm very sorry. But I'm afraid it's a little late. Why? I suppose it's because I loved you too much. I wore the passion out. But don't you care for me at all? Not at all. You old silly. I believe you're nervous. You don't know how nice I can be. Stop it. Why? You disgust me. I disgust you. All right, you are for it, Mr. Philip Carey. You've always disgusted me, you mean-mouthed hypocrite. You stingy rat. Think you're the great benefactor, don't you? Taking Paul Mildred in off the street and you can throw it in my face. You've never given me a thing. You haven't grudged the money. Comes in every bleeding farthing. Let me tell you something. I never cared for you. Not once. You bored me stiff. You've always bored me with your manners and your iron mighty ways. You used to make me sick just to have to kiss you. We was laughing at you, Harry Griffiths and I, because you were such a mug. A mug. If you've quite finished. I've finished, all right. Finished with you and your almighty airs. Not good enough for you, eh? You, you... I know you. Think you're an artist? Just a lot of dirty shoes. That's a dirty bit of mat on the wall.
And now let's pause for a moment and look at our program again. Best place for a turkey, huh? Well, <laughs> when holiday time is coming, I guess a tree is the best place, from a turkey's point of view. Maybe so. But I'm going to show you the best place for a turkey from the point of view of the people who are going to eat it. There, in the Westinghouse Electric Roaster, America's favorite. You've never tasted such a delicious turkey as this electric roaster turns out. Let's lift the lid off this electric roaster. Look, it has a glass panel in it so that you can peek through if you want to watch the turkey roasting. Now, this lid makes the roaster self-basting. It saves flavor, it saves moisture. The turkey just doesn't dry out, and it won't shrink. Now, let's have a look at the bird. There. I wish you were here in the studio with me. I know you just couldn't resist it. And I'd give you a drumstick, maybe. Look, there's the Westinghouse Roaster's True Temp Heat Control. It's calibrated to match the temperatures in your cookbook with super, super exactness. You just set the heat control and the turkey, turkey cooks automatically until it's done. Now, suppose that you wanted to cook a complete meal instead of roasting a turkey in your Westinghouse electric roaster. These three heat-proof dishes come with the roaster. Now, in this one, I've put a ham with sweet potatoes around it, cherry cobbler in this dish, and carrots in that one. Now, I just set them on the rack Put the rack in the roaster. There, isn't that simple? Then, turn the heat control to 375 degrees. And in an hour, the complete meal will be ready. Cooked all by itself to perfection in that wonderful help around the house, the Westinghouse Electric Roaster. Help around the house is right, because the Westinghouse Electric Roaster plugs in wherever it's most convenient. Holiday time is coming, so come on in and see the Westinghouse Electric Roaster. Such a wonderful extra cooking appliance at such modest cost. Only $39.95. And you'll be especially proud of your turkey if it's cooked the extra flavorful Westinghouse Roaster way. We return now to A Human Bundy. not getting up, Mrs. Cameron. I'm not sure I can. I have to see you. I'm at the end of my rope, Mr. Carey. Both of us, Mrs. Cameron. It's been three months now, and not a penny have I got on the rent. And if I had a penny, you'd be the first to get it, Mrs. Cameron. Oh, can't you get a job? Any job? Apparently not. There's no market for cripples. I suppose you want me to leave. Well, what can I do? All right, I'll get out in the morning. I'll go somewhere where you don't need to worry about me. You've been very patient, Mrs. Cameron. Well... Hello, uh. oh, Mrs. Cameron. Miss Carrie in. Oh, I'm so glad you've come, Miss. He's bad. Very bad. Why? What's the matter? It was there, and that's almost five months ago. Very bad. Very bad. Sally. Sally, you shouldn't have oh, come. Oh, darling, you're ill. Why didn't you let me know? I'm Finish. Please go away, sir. No, I won't go, and you're not finished. We'll get you to a hospital and get you well no, again. it's too far to walk. Being too humiliated. There's just so much one person can take in one life, you know. Oh, my dear, you've just started. No, I've walked too far. Too many doors to unlock to shut out the hideous past. Please leave me, sir. 
Sally. All right, I'll leave you. But only for a little while. I'm going out to get a doctor. Now you just stay there and rest. I'll be right back. A doctor. Whatever gave me the idea I could get to be a doctor. Dr. Philip Carey. <laughs> In? Yes, Doctor. He's inside right now with a patient. Oh, good. More patients, the better, eh? Oh, we've been very busy this last month. We'll be moving into our new offices soon. Splendid. He'll end up on Harley Street yet. Yes. Well, um, since he's tied up, may I leave a message, Nurse? Of course, Doctor. Nurse, Thank you, you very much. Dunsford! What are you doing here? You paying me a professional visit? Good Lord, no. I'm bringing you a message from Jacobs. He'll be back from Italy in a month. He'll be back from Italy in a month, and soon you'll be walking. You mean he's a great lord? Yes, How he's going to do it. You'll be walking within a month, and without a limp. How long? Too long, much too long. Yes, much too long. Well, I know you have a patient waiting, so I won't keep you. Thanks for coming in. Oh, by the way, I spent the weekend with Sally. She asked me to give you this. What is it? Stitched it up again, almost like new. Yes, some things can be stitched up, you know. In fact, almost everything, if you really try. Goodbye, Philip. You wanted something, Doctor? Yes, I did, nurse. I can't remember what it was. I'm sorry to keep you waiting. Oh, I didn't mind. Was kind of you to see me. I never thought you would. You want the truth? Why do you think I came? You were the only doctor I could come to. Well, there's not much chance. What do you mean? I'm sorry, but it's better that you know. How long? Six months. Perhaps a year if you get to some warmer climate out of oh, England. That's a lot. You should be in a hospital. I can't be seen, so that's that. Uh, I did say I thought what was coming to me. Well, I can face it. I've always faced everything. It's one thing you've got to admit. Here. You should have this filled. It won't do much good, but it may help that cold. Thank you. No, it's all right. No, no, it was a professional visit. I don't want your money. You were very kind. Well, I'll, I'll be going. I suppose it's really goodbye this time? Yes. Funny how things turn out. You know, Philip, you're a gentleman in every sense of the word. The only one I ever knew. I came to you. I couldn't wait till the week. Oh, Philip. Yes. I wanted to show you here, not at the hospital. Oh, my dear. Jacob has done a miraculous job. I don't know what to say. You know what Jacob said? He said, get that limp out of your mind or you'll spoil the most perfect job I've ever done. He was right. I don't want to spoil his job, Sally. I don't want to spoil the rest of our lives. What do you mean? Well, I've had time to think. I found out something, Sally. Freedom is a myth. I've fought against all kinds of bondage, even to the kind of bondage I thought I might have loving you. And I found out a little of what old Croucho meant in Paris when he said, study the pattern of the rug. I found out we make the pattern ourselves, and our chains are those we bind ourselves. That's what I learned from Paris, from Mildred, and from pain. I've made such a mess in my life, Sally. Help me to walk straight. From now on. Yes, darling. I can't do without you. I'd be lost. I love you, Sally. Oh, Philip, you're free. You can walk now. You can run. And I'll be with you.
Mature is a strong word. But over the years, we at Westinghouse have learned to live by that word. Tonight's story of the sureness behind every Westinghouse product begins with this new Krypton lamp, only about the size of a lead pencil. It is ten times brighter than the sun. The new Westinghouse Krypton lamp means safety to those airplane passengers about to land in this dense fog. Here's how it works. On the ground, a line of Westinghouse Krypton lights flash in rapid succession like an animated electric sign. To pilots, these lights look like a streak of lightning guiding them safely down the runway. This series of split-second surges of light, three and a third billion candle power, is designed to be seen a thousand feet through zero-zero fog. At Tempelhof Aerodrome, these Westinghouse lamps played a vital part in Berlin's airlift. At Cleveland and New York International Airports, brilliant Krypton lamps are available to shine through the fog and guide pilots to safe landings. Whether it's lights for an airport or a nightlight for a nursery, for home or business, for farm or factory, you can be sure if it's Westinghouse. This production of A Human Bondage was presented through the courtesy of Warner Brothers Pictures, whose current production is The Story of Seabiscuit, starring Shirley Temple, Barry Fitzgerald, and Lon McAllister. Others in the cast of Of Human Bondage were Elizabeth Templeton, Barbara Bolton, Paul Lighty, and Tom de Graffenry. This is Paul Brinson saying goodnight for Westinghouse, inviting you to be with us again next week. Meanwhile, why not stop in at your dealers? Look at the new Westinghouse television sets. You'll see why people who like to get the most for their money are buying Westinghouse television sets today. And say, if you want your family to enjoy the best turkey ever, remember the Westinghouse electric roaster oven. It gives you all the wonderful advantages of electrical cooking at such a modest price. And now, until next week, good night. <laughs>